Again, good morning to all of you and welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here together on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Uh, again, Lent continues to quickly move through. We have a fifth Sunday, and then we will be celebrating uh, again Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Easter. So wonderful things are ahead. But as we gather together today, um, we hear this beautiful passage from Scripture, and certainly standing through this whole gospel, which was like three pages long, uh, it's part of our, our penance during this time of year, I guess. <laughs> so hopefully, we'll spend a few less days in purgatory because of it. Um, but again, this is such a beautiful passage from Scripture because it speaks about how God continues to call us to see Christ as the light of the world and how God continues to call us to also be that light to one another. Uh, that is the beautiful challenge that the Lord places before us. We have spent time, um, again, listening to this, again, situation that this blind man was in. And this beautiful passage from Scripture tells us a lot about how God continues to extend his mercy and his compassion to us. The first part of this whole process of allowing him to come and see as God, Jesus made a clay from the ground and placed it on his eyes so that he might see uh, tells us, again, of the fact that just as God created the world and gave us light, so too we are called to be the people of light in the world. So too Jesus continues to show us the way, again, to live the good news of Jesus Christ. The other part of this is to allow us to understand that it is God who acts in our lives. It is God who takes the first steps. This gentleman who was born blind throughout this whole first part of the scriptures, never once asked Jesus to help him to see. But Jesus reached out with compassion and mercy uh, to this person so that he might be able to see. And he says, the reason this man is blind is so that God's work can be done because he was considered an outcast in society. He was considered someone who was sort of unclean. The, the people, again, at those days and those times, again, thought about the fact that people had these disabilities because they were sinners or they had committed some sin and therefore some physical ailment happened in their life or that their parents were, and it was passed on from generation to generation, were also sinners and therefore they were being punished by God. But that is not what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying, this is not so because the apostles ask him that question, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. And Jesus says, neither he nor his parents, but so that God might be made visible through him. And that is what we are called to do too, that God hopefully is made very visible through each and every one of us, through what we say, through what we do, through how we live our lives, that that light of Christ penetrates our hearts and our lives and shines forth into the world in which we live. Jesus, our God, is the one who reaches out with his healing spirit and his healing presence to each and every one of us and invites us to welcome that invitation, invites us to celebrate that good news. Lent for us is supposed to be, again, a time of renewal. Uh, the word Lent, as you well know, means spring. It means renewal. It means new life. That is what this Lenten journey is supposed to be all about. Jesus reaching out to touch the eyes of this man certainly created for him a whole new way of living life. We have, again, been in dark rooms. We have been in places where we've kept our eyes closed for a long period of time. And can you imagine what that might be like to live like that for the rest of your life? Not being able to see light, not being able to see color, not being able to see the world, not being able to see textures, not being able to see the faces of one another. And now that we don't have to wear our masks, we can see everyone's whole face, which is absolutely wonderful. We were becoming very good at looking at eyes and seeing the eyes. That was like a curse for this man because of the fact that he could no longer participate in life fully. And that is what Jesus comes to offer us. By his death and resurrection, he has set us free from sin and death. 
so that we might live life to its fullest, so that we might live again the life that he has called each and every one of us to each and every day. Jesus, again in the gospel today, reminds us that he is the light of life, that he is the one who continues to show us the way. And you know that so beautifully when we celebrate the Easter Vigil and we light for the first time the new Paschal candle for the new year. Lighting that candle again as reminds us that Christ is the light of the world and the challenge that he has given us to truly see as he sees, to live our faith and to use that faith as a filter so that we might see through the eyes of faith how we are to live, how we are to act, and what we are to do. That we allow God's word and his sacrament to truly transform our lives so that like this blind man, we might better be able to see not necessarily physically, but seeing within our hearts, seeing within our souls, seeing within our minds how God has called us to truly live his life and to share his love with those around us. We have before us our elect who will be eventually received into the church at Easter Vigil through baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. That initiation is the gift of life from our God wipes out all sin, and continues to promise us that our God will always be with us to watch over us, to guide us, and to direct us always. We can become very blind by evil in the world. We can become very blind by our own pride. We can become blind by all of the things that prevent us from truly seeing in the ways in which Jesus showed us by his life how we are to see the world in which we live. Jesus certainly always turns things totally upside down. He says, those of you who see are really blind, and those who are blind can see, because we are seeing through Christ's heart. We are seeing through his eyes. We are seeing through faith how we are to act and what we are to do. So today, as we come together, the beautiful words, again, of St. Paul to the church in Ephesus reminds us who we are. You were once in darkness, St. Paul writes, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed to the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. May we continue to be the light of Christ for one another as we journey together to God's kingdom of light, love, and